Today on BRS TV, we have our fifth episode of the RODI series. In today's episode, we're going to discuss chloramines and what they mean to reefing. More and more municipalities are switching over to chloramines as they're disaffected. There's a pretty old estimate out there that 10% of the city water supplies are using chloramines, but today I think that number is much higher. Before we get too deep into this, I think it's important to point out that chloramines are a bit different than chlorine. Chlorine is the standard disinfectant that most cities use. If you want to know what your city uses, you can call your water treatment facility. That number can be found by looking at your water bill or calling your city hall. You can use a chloramine system to treat both chloramines and chlorine. So if you're having trouble finding out what your city uses or you just want to be absolutely sure you're using the right thing, go with the system designed for chloramines. In fact, the specialized carbon in a chloramine system is more effective at removing things like volatile organic compounds as well. The only downside is the system does cost a few dollars more. Let's start with how a standard carbon block deals with chlorine, which is a bit different than how it deals with standard organics. With standard organics, the carbon adsorbs the organics and attaches them to the surface of the carbon. With chlorine, it's a bit different. The process of dechlorination is a chemical reaction of the carbon surface being oxidized by chlorine. The result of this reaction is chloride, which the RO membrane and DI resin can easily remove. Chloramines are going to behave a bit different. Chloramines are actually just chlorine, which has been reacted with ammonia. Municipal water supplies have been switching over to chloramines because they are more stable, and it doesn't dissipate as quickly as chlorine. Chloramines also have a way lower tendency than chlorine to convert organics into harmful things like chlorocarbons. Removing chloramines is a bit different. If we were to use a standard carbon block, there are two basic reactions that can happen. The first one results in ammonia and chloride being formed with the carbon, and the second one is just nitrogen and chloride. The second one is our preferred reaction, the one we'd like to promote. Obviously, we don't want to be adding ammonia with our top off water and water changes. There are two ways we can promote the second reaction and avoid forming ammonia. The first one is pre-soaking the carbon for a significant amount of time, combined with slowing down the flow rate through the system to increase contact time. Some standards suggest 10 minutes of direct contact time, which is pretty difficult to achieve in most reef RODI systems. The alternative is to use specialized carbon, commonly referred to as surface modified or catalytic activated carbon. These carbons have reaction sites that have been enhanced during the manufacturing process, which allow them to properly treat the water with less than one-third the contact time standard carbon would require for treating chloramines. If you have chloramines in your water, it is really important to take steps like this because reverse osmosis membranes and DI resin aren't very effective at removing ammonia. I don't think there's a single one of us that knowingly wants to dose ammonia every day with our top off water or water changes. Let's go take a look at a couple of our chloramine systems. So we have two basic systems here. One is pretty similar to a standard RO system, but with a few changes. Rather than using standard carbon blocks, we're going to use some specialized cartridges. The first one is a refillable cartridge filled with surface modified or catalytic activated carbon granules. These refillable cartridges are effective and affordable. The second cartridge is a Pentec Chlor Plus carbon block which is specifically designed for dealing with chloramines. A carbon block is a powdered carbon that has been extruded into a block like this. The tiny little particles that make up this block are extremely effective at properly processing chloramines. The reason we use a granulated carbon first is because it's an effective and affordable way to treat chloramines as well as absorb organics. So the water going into the more expensive Chlor Plus carbon block is treated fairly well already. If we change out the catalytic carbon more often, the Chlor Plus block will last a lot longer. The Pentec datasheet says the Core Plus carbon block should last about 2,500 gallons at a half a gallon per minute flow rate. A properly set up RO system operates between 3 to 1 and a 5 to 1 waste to product water ratio. So on average, you should probably need to change out this filter about every 500 gallons of product water. However, if we remove a vast majority of the organics and chloramines with the catalytic activated carbon cartridge, there's way less demand on the more expensive Pentec Chlor Plus cartridge. With the two running in series like this, we suggest changing the catalytic carbon cartridge every 500 gallons of water produced 
and the chlor plus every thousand. On your average 100 gallon tank, that would probably mean every three months for the catalytic carbon and every six months for the chlor plus carbon block. In most cases, we don't recommend running two chlor plus carbon blocks in series because they are one micron blocks which have a higher pressure drop than many other carbon blocks. Using two like that could drop the effective pressure going into your membrane and hurt overall system performance. One of the nice things about our chloramine systems is they come with a carbon flush valve. Granulated carbon can be a bit dusty and we would prefer to keep the dust out of our systems. So we installed this valve which allows you to flush all the carbon fines down the wastewater line after changing the filters. So the second system we have here is what we call the chloramine monster. This is designed to be installed before an RO system. You would use this if you wanted to produce water at faster flow rates, say like with our 300 gallon per day Spartan, or if you simply never wanted to be concerned with chloramines ever again on a standard system. The chloramine monster has a large radial flow Pentec filter inside designed for treating chloramines. The radial flow means water passes through the sides of the entire filter rather than just through the bottom, which depletes the filter more evenly. The specs in the filter say that it's good for 25,000 gallons at a flow rate of 2.5 gallons per minute. But when I spoke with some of their techs, they said it should last around 75,000 gallons at flow rates under a gallon a minute, which are much more common to RO systems. So considering wastewater, that's around 15,000 gallons of product water this thing can produce. Most people would probably never have to worry about chloramines ever again. However, it's probably wise to install a sediment filter before the monster to make sure it doesn't get clogged before that. This could also be a good option for someone who already owns an RO system, but recently realized their city has switched over to chloramines. Rather than trying to modify your old system, you can put something like this before the entire system. Well, that wraps up today's episode. In the next episode of the RODI series, we're going to install a Water Saver 150 gallon per day upgrade kit. If you found this demo helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching BRS TV.